Our society is built on energy and the, the success of our society will depend on the use of energy. We just have to get smarter about how we produce that energy and how we consume it. I think that energy is the lifeline of society and the more that I travel and go to other places outside of Canada, I realize that energy means opportunity and it really, really means a standard of living that everyone's aiming to achieve. The easiest way for me to think about energy is that it's a force that can do work. It can light a room, it can heat a room, it can turn an engine, or we can use it in devices that make our life easier. A few things about Canada that people often forget is that it's a large country, so transportation makes up a lot of the energy consumption. It's a cold country, so heating is, is very important. But also the industries that we have in the country tend to be energy intensive. So it's, a, it's really a matter of the way the overall economy is structured and the way the, our physical and geographic layout is. A lot of those things bias us towards higher energy consumption. Canadians' attitude to energy starts with almost the expectation of 100% availability of energy on demand. For whatever reason, it's become almost a right or an expectation of, of society that that energy is there, it's reasonably priced. If you think about going into a dark room and flipping the light switch, you expect the lights to come on. And when they don't, you think there's a problem. And so that means that we always have to have a system backing us up, ready to serve us on demand. That makes us pretty complacent because it's rare that we go to the cupboard and the cupboard's bare. You know, they don't realize that when somebody flips on a light switch, a generator somewhere kicks in and turbines start powering up. Most people that do that don't understand where that energy comes from. Canada produces about 15% of its electricity now from coal. Natural gas is only about 5% of the electricity generation. The, the bulk of the electricity in Canada is actually hydro. If I had to describe Canada energy, I would say diversity. Every single province has a different energy landscape. Atlantic Canada, the four smallest provinces in Canada up, up against the East Coast, uh, their energy mix is more oil, it's more hydrocarbons. Quebec, almost all of their electricity generation is from hydroelectricity, much of which they export to the United States. It's a big industry for the province of Quebec. Ontario, there you see a little bit more sort of diversity in energy. There's nuclear, there is hydro, there's also natural gas and coal uh, used for electricity. Then moving west, you get to the three prairie provinces, Manitoba, Saskatchewan, and Alberta. Manitoba has a lot of hydroelectricity, uh, but Alberta and Saskatchewan, these are the oil-rich provinces of Canada. A lot of natural gas, a lot of coal, and a lot of oil. And in northern Alberta, a lot of oil sands, which is a particular bitumen, it's a particular kind of oil. And then you get to the West Coast, you get to British Columbia, where again it is more of a mix. There's some hydroelectricity. There's a lot of natural gas in British Columbia that they use for electricity generation, but also hydrocarbons, gasoline, diesel, uh, British Columbia being one of the major transportation hubs for the whole continent. It's Canada's gateway to Asia and the Pacific. Canada is one of the most unique and energy-rich countries in the world. It is a beneficiary of a wide store of natural sources of energy. We're currently the sixth largest oil producer. We're the third largest natural gas producer. We've got big uh, reserves of coal. They have some of the largest stocks of yellow cake uranium necessary for nuclear power stations uh, in the world. And they also have some of the best hydroelectric resources anywhere in the world. And so if we could characterize Canada writ large, it is that it's tremendously resource rich and it is tremendously diversified across from east to west with lots of variation in the energy resources. I think that the most important part of Canada's energy future is going to be balance. 
because at the end of the day, we have massive, massive resources, like more than I think most countries on the world would dream of having. The thing to remember is over half of the energy produced in the country actually goes to the United States. So energy is not only really an important part of how the country operates, it's also an important part of our economy as an export product. Now that comes, it's a bit of a mixed blessing. In one hand, that uh, the, the amount of hydrocarbons that we're exporting has enriched Canada, it's enriched our government tax base, corporate taxes for the federal government, provincial government, the royalties we collect from those, uh, and the employment also that it has generated from people in all parts of the country. So there's huge pressure to develop it because of the wealth that's tied up in that. Um, but we also recognize that we also have a responsibility around how that extraction is done, um, how that, what, what that fuel is being used for, and how in the future we can transition ourselves to that low carbon future using the wealth that's being created uh, from that resource. So I think that the most important thing for Canada and what I would like to see in a, in a sustainable future is reinvesting the dollars and the market benefits that come from the resources that we have into developing a diverse portfolio of energy solutions like renewables, like CO2 reduction technologies. All of the provinces are working on including more renewable energy in the mix. There's some big solar projects, for example a Calgary-based firm's got the biggest solar plant which is actually producing in Sarnia, Ontario. And so Canada's electricity grid is actually pretty clean. About, it's actually about 80% non-emitting. There still is a significant amount of coal and natural gas, fossil-based uh, generation that needs attention in a, in a greenhouse gas world. But from, from an electricity perspective, it's really going after the last bit, uh, not necessarily an enormous transition of our electricity system as one might see more in the United States at least. One of the challenges Canada has when you look at its energy industry is that we don't sometimes have all the proper infrastructure in place to act as one country. The electricity grid is not a national grid. It's set up north-south, so uh, electricity production in Alberta and British Columbia used domestically and then it, any excess is exported to the United States. The same argument or the same problem exists with a pipeline infrastructure carrying Western Canadian oil stops at that Ottawa River separating Ontario and Quebec. So at the moment, it's not even possible to get Western Canadian oil into Quebec or Atlantic Canada. They're importing oil to their refineries. The reasons for that go back 50 years, but then Middle Eastern oil was far less expensive than was Western Canadian oil. So it's difficult to talk about a national energy strategy or even more interconnectedness when we lack the physical infrastructure at the moment to really make that happen. There is a complication in the sense that there are other groups in Canada who also have some interest in the land. The Aboriginal First Nations people have broad treaty and in some cases uh, uh, control of land that is not covered by a treaty. The elders tell us that we are part of the land. You can't separate us from the land. We're in the middle trying to maintain our culture and our traditions while participating in kind of the conventional economy that's going on right now. So that element, this respect for the land, respect for the people who have indigenous rights over the land, also complicates the issue of uh, who gets oversight and who participates in the, in the process. I think there is a, there's a way to find the common ground, like there's a way to be who we are and, and kind of coexist in it, but you have to have that balance. It's challenging because everybody has an interest in our area, they tend to forget that there's a treaty in place here and there are certain rules that are supposed to be followed. In an ideal world we'd have a harmonized approach across the country but because of the different uh, geographies, the different jurisdictions, we'll probably have something that's a little more patchwork than that at the end of the day. And in that sense trying to get a collective vision really depends on getting the decision makers to believe that there's a problem and to impress upon their constituents 
that if we don't act collectively and consistently, then we will be in a place where quality of life is going to decline, costs will increase, and worst of all, you won't have access to all the energy that you want to use. As we move forward, we are trying to envision a future where we don't have all of the unintended consequences. And that's really the challenge that's facing us right now is there isn't a clear and obvious choice of what's next. Certainly from a perspective of turning down uh, coal-fired generation, that is happening. The federal government recently passed greenhouse gas regulations putting a, an end of life on existing coal-fired power plants at 50 years. It's unlikely we're going to see any more coal generation being built in Canada. What I see is there's going to be a transition over the next decade that the early replacement generation is going to come from natural gas, but that's very quickly going to, to be replaced by renewables. And that renewables will become ultimately the bulk of the replacement generation and the growth generation in Canada. At the end of the day, this isn't about what part of the world you live in or it's not about where you were born or what your energy circumstances are. We live on one planet and we have to figure out a way to work together on this. As consumers, we all are involved in how that energy gets used, how that food is, is grown, how it arrives on your table, how your home is heated, how your vehicle is fueled. We don't think about the size of the footprint we have as individual consumers. And I don't expect everybody to become experts on this, but we should start to, to help raise a level of awareness that the decisions we make uh, impacts how much energy is being used and how that, where that energy is coming from. I would love to be able to say, there is a solution, all we have to do is switch over to this technology and the problem is solved. We don't have that solution, so now, given the technologies we have on the table, how do we address the issues so that we can mitigate all of the unintended consequences. I certainly think that Canada can lead the way. I think the question is really, will Canada lead the way? Uh, Canada's certainly got a lot of expertise in producing hydrocarbons. It has got a lot of wind, it has got a lot of solar, it's got a lot of geothermal, it's got the resources. It's actually physically got the wind and the solar and the geothermal. There is a challenge with the provincial versus federal split. That said, I think the industry, and I think both levels of government, increasingly do see that Canada needs to demonstrate that leadership. And we really need to start encouraging innovation and encouraging young people, current people in the industry, to think about what they've learned throughout all their years and combine it to come up with some really creative solutions. And there has been a lot of progress, but we just need more progress. And because we are currently a population of 7 billion worldwide and we're moving to 9 billion by 2050, we do need to get the model down on how we create a sustainable society. Not just for our energy, but uh, for all of the things that we require to build a modern, a successful society that people will want to live in.